this is a recipe that like I as an adult love and obviously is an extremely kid-friendly dessert. Probably, probably made for children, but I also love it. Hey everyone, I'm Claire. Welcome back to my home kitchen. I am very excited today to show you another recipe from Dessert Person. I am making one of the most celebratory things you could possibly bake, and it is my confetti cake, based on, of course, my beloved Pillsbury box cake mix that I made as a kid all the time. But it tastes a lot better, I think. I also just love building layer cakes, so it's gonna be a fun one to show you. So, because I haven't had Funfetti cake mix in so long, I did go ahead and buy a box mix, and so I'm gonna go ahead and read the ingredients, just for old time's sake. There's a lot of them. Enriched bleached flour, parentheses wheat flour, niacin, reduced iron, thiamine, mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid, close parentheses, sugar, candy bits, parentheses sugar, cornstarch, vegetable oil, bracket palm and palm kernel, close bracket, soy lecithin, dextrin, confectioners, glaze, red 40 lake, yellow five lake, natural and artificial flavor, blue one lake, carnauba wax, yellow six lake, close parentheses, leavening, parentheses baking soda, calcium phosphate, sodium aluminum phosphate, close parentheses, contains 2% or less of canola oil, dextrose, salt, cellulose, corn starch, propylene glycol esters of fatty acids, monoglycerides, xanthan gum, natural and artificial flavor, cellulose gum, sodium, steroil, lactylate, soy lecithin, whey, sodium, caseinate, palm kernel oil, BHT, and citric acid, parentheses, antioxidants. That was a mouthful. This is one of the more opaque or non-transparent ingredient list I've read actually. There's obviously a lot of preservatives in here and I think that that tends to give kind of an off flavor and even like a little bitterness to a lot of boxed cake mixes. Um, so this recipe for confetti cake takes everything about the box mix that I love, which is like the extreme tenderness um, and fluffy texture, but gives it a much, much better flavor. Point is, we're taking all the nostalgia of Funfetti and making a homemade version. No, no. Uh... <laughs> this cake is a scaled down version of the wedding cake I made for my sister, but it still makes a very large amount of batter. So it's important to use a stand mixer. If you want to use a hand mixer, you still can, but have, the, have all the ingredients because otherwise the volume is just going to be too great for you to do by hand. And then I have three nine inch cake pans. So this again makes a three layer nine inch cake, which is quite a large cake and it serves a lot of people. You could probably get like 20 servings out of this cake. So for this recipe, I have my dry ingredients, cake flour, salt, baking powder, and soda. Then I have egg whites and whole eggs, buttermilk, oil, three sticks of unsalted butter, vanilla and almond extracts, and most importantly, the really waxy, tasteless grocery store sprinkles. Sometimes you go to like a, like Whole Foods has it or a organic food shop or something like that or a health food store and you'll see like fancy sprinkles that are made of, I don't even know what. You do not want those. You want the, this is Betty Crocker brand. You want the like very waxy, tasteless, brightly colored grocery store sprinkles just like this. And that's because these stay really vibrant in the cake. If you were to use another kind of sprinkle that's more natural, sometimes it kind of dissolves into the batter and disappears and we want really bright, little polka dots of color. So use, use the shitty sprinkles. Um, all right, should we start? This cake method of mixing is very different than what you're probably used to if you make a lot of cakes at home. Typically you start with butter and sugar and you cream it together into light and fluffy and then you do, you know, you go into eggs and dry and wet, whatever. This method is opposite. It's called reverse creaming. So I'm starting actually with all of my dry ingredients in the mixer, plus sugar. I have a note here that says has salt because I was making the layers last night and I got confused about the ingredients that I had measured out. So this already has the salt added. Now reverse creaming is a method pioneered by the doyen of cake making. The doyen of cake making, 
Rose Levy Berenbaum, author of The Cake Bible. Um, and it is just a different method of mixing the batter that produces a very tender cake and really flat layers. So this is great if you're making a large volume of batter. Uh, granulated sugar. Then three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. And I have soda and powder because I have buttermilk, so it's an acidic ingredient. And then four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. All right, so that is all of my dry ingredients plus sugar. Sugar is not technically a dry ingredient, it's a wet ingredient. I wanna start by mixing all this together and I have the paddle attachment. You know what I really need to be doing right now, which I forgot about? I need to be preheating the oven and preparing my cake pans. Can we back up? All right, I'm turning my oven on 350. Also, this is very important. We're baking three layers at once, so I have two racks in the oven, one in the upper third, one in the lower third, and that's because when we bake, what you don't wanna have in the oven is like a pan right above another pan because it's gonna block the heat from the surface of the one on the bottom. So we're baking one on one rack and then the other two staggered off to the sides on the other and then we rotate them so that it goes like this and that one comes up. Okay, uh, what am I gonna use? I have some, I'm gonna grease the pans with oil. You could use butter. Just using my pastry brush to work it all the way around. So then your parchment goes down in the middle, and then I use the pastry brush to not only grease it, but to also press it down and eliminate air pockets. So by greasing the bottom and then placing the parchment, I have a surface that isn't gonna, like this parchment paper won't move around when I go to pour the batter in. Now that we have the oven preheated and our pans prepared, I'm going to pivot back to the batter. Ooh. and. What I want to do first is just use the paddle to incorporate all the dry ingredients plus the sugar, kind of just pulsing. The buttermilk, eggs, and butter are all completely room temperature, and that's very important, especially the butter, and I'll talk about why. So, but first I'm going to just beat the egg whites and the whole eggs. Uh, I just want to incorporate them. I don't, I want to break up the whites themselves and also incorporate the yolks. So I'm just gonna mix this until it's free of any streaks. And then to this, I'm gonna add my extracts. So how much vanilla is it? Is it a whole tablespoon? Yep. In layer cakes, I tend to add a lot of vanilla, especially because this is a very delicious, pure vanilla extract. And then I do like to add the almond extract. It just kind of gives this cake an identity. Okay. So now I, I'm gonna show you how to mix together a cake using this method. Again, it's called reverse creaming. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add my butter. So it's three sticks. Oh God, this is very soft butter. Oh God. Okay. And then I'm also gonna add the oil. This is only a third of a cup. I also wanna add a little bit of liquid and that way the fat and the liquid together will kind of create the right amount of gluten development. Pulsing this in. And then once I see most of the flour kind of hydrate, I can let it go. So if the butter were even the least bit firm, I would get like lots of lumps rather than it evenly working into the batter. So this is looking good. And then I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. You should beat it for about a minute. With this method of mixing, which creates, as I said, a very tender and, a, and very evenly baked flat layers, um, you actually wanna mix it more than you might think because again, we need some development of the batter. So now I'm gonna add the rest of my liquid ingredients, which are my eggs and the extracts. And then I can increase the speed as it begins to incorporate. Now that I've added the eggs, it's looking particularly smooth and satiny. And now I wanna work some air into the batter because I didn't have that initial step where I creamed together the butter and sugar, which creates a very airy, fluffy batter. So now I wanna kind of try to whip it a little bit. So I'm gonna turn the speed up and just let it go for like a minute or two. A minute, by the way, if you ever time, I would've been like, yeah, that was a minute. Minutes actually go very slow when you're using the stand mixer. So I do actually set a timer, but I just wanna uh, wipe down the sides. This is giving me Mrs. Doubtfire face mask vibes. This is my favorite part of this recipe. 
because I love folding in the sprinkles. When I was a kid, I don't know why my mom bought this. This is very unlike my mom, but she got me Sprinklin's yogurt, which was just yogurt that you put sprinkles inside, and I have n no idea why I ate that. Didn't Dunkaroos have a sprinkle version? Mm-hmm. I was never allowed to have Dunkaroos, which was a great tragedy of my childhood. My mom never bought them. I wanted them so bad. All right, I actually, I'm gonna add more sprinkles because I kind of want to exaggerate. I know the recipe calls for a half cup, but I'm editorializing myself and adding more. So this is nicely distributed. I'm gonna stop mixing. So in order to have the most even layers for the easiest assembly, I'm weighing the batter in each of the pans so I know I have exactly the same amount. So I'm gonna weigh out, again, it's a lot of batter, one pound, 12 ounces in each layer. What, does that say 11 and seven eighths? Yep, 12 and a quarter. Damn it. Now what does it say? 12 and a quarter. Damn it. 11 and seven eighths. God. 12 and an eighth. Oh, no, it's, it's, now it's 12? It's, it's skipping back and forth. Okay, wait, hold on. Using these measurements, I should, it uses like every last bit of batter, so scrape the bowl very, very well. All right, that one's just gonna be 11 and 7 eighths. I'm giving up on that one. Before I bake them, I just wanna smooth out the layers with the greatest tool ever created, the small S that's spatula. Do you have a name yet? Um, I still haven't named it. I totally forgot that I was going to do that. Um, what, what were the suggestions, Mr. Mr. Smooth? <laughs> Mr. Smooth. Uh, I got to, I got to try that one on and see. I'll think about it. What about Count Spatula? Count Spatula? That's a good one. That's a really good one. Count Spatula. I like it. Wait, hold on. Did the vet text me? Hold on. Oh no, I think this is just saying that our food was delivered. Yeah. Never mind. Sorry, I'm waiting to hear from the vet. Maybe you guys notice that Felix isn't here. He's sick. Poor kitty. He's at the vet. These are going into my preheated oven. Oh, shit. I, well, whatever. I didn't really adjust the racks as much as I should have, but that's fine. Okay. So I'm going to bake these for a full half an hour before I rotate them, and they'll bake 40 to 45 minutes total. While I'm waiting for the layers to bake, we're gonna roll into cream cheese frosting. So this is classic version. You've seen it before. I've made it on the show. You will need a stand mixer to put it together. You could do it with a hand mixer if you needed to. But we have room temperature butter, and then a pound of room temperature cream cheese, then just a little vanilla extract, salt, and one pound of confectioner sugar. So I actually let these sit out overnight because I wanted to make sure they're very room temp. And for the love of God, Please don't use low fat for this. It's just not, there's no point. It's not gonna be good. So I'm gonna beat the cream cheese first. I want it to still be kind of dense. And now my butter. Now I'm gonna add a generous pinch of salt. What I like about this, I hate measuring out powdered sugar. It's just a pain and I usually get it everywhere. So I like this recipe because I know I can just use the whole bag. Now I cover up the mixer to protect from flying powdered sugar, and then I just gently pulse. Now that I have all the sugar incorporated and it's not sitting on top of the butter cream cheese mixture, I can start to beat it. Now I have this beautiful, smooth cream cheese frosting. I'm gonna add my final ingredient, which is a little bit of vanilla extract. Uh, if you wanted to be particularly fancy, you could do a vanilla bean. This is done. Now, because it's quite warm in the kitchen today, as it always is, this frosting is a little bit loose, mostly because the butter was warmer than room temp. Should we? It's hot. So I am going to put this in the fridge. Where the hell am I gonna put this? Uh, um, type of milk number one, type of milk number two. Uh, ignore this lactate milk. This was a mistake from the grocery store. All right. 
All right, so now we have eight minutes left on that initial 30 minute timer. So almost time to rotate, uh, but we're gonna press on with our swaps. So my timer is about to go off, which means I'm 30 minutes into the bake time for the layers. And these cakes take between 40 and 45. So now's a good point to rotate because they're gonna start to take on color. And that's when I wanna make sure they're not browning unevenly. So that one goes in the middle. That one switches sides. This one switches sides. And that's that. Okay. Uh, these will probably take another 10 to 15 minutes, so I'm going to set my timer again. I know the cakes are about ready because, well, I looked at them, but I also can smell them, so use your nose. That's a good indication. You'll probably know exactly when they're done, so I'm going to test just to see. It comes out clean. So I'm going to set these off to the side. These are going to cool completely in the pans, but fortunately I have layers here that I baked last night. So these layers... I overbaked them a little bit. You can see that the sides are very dark. So these still have a slightly pronounced dome and I'm going to use a serrated knife to horizontally level the layers so that they're very flat. And that just means when I go to stack the cake, I'll have those perfectly parallel layers that you want in a layer cake. So I have one layer here, again, fully cooled. I'm gonna hold the knife parallel to the surface and kind of go all the way around the cake and hopefully remove the domed portion in one piece. So now I've gone all the way around, and I just want to cut now through the very center part, which I haven't sliced through yet. Look at all the funfetti. I actually like when I have to level a cake because then it gives you a little preview. I get, I'm like a little wary of assembling something and serving it that I haven't myself tasted. Mm. This cake over here that's fresh, I have a feeling this is gonna be a really nice, light, bouncy, not dry cake. This cake, however, that sat out overnight and it got a little dark, is slightly drier than I want it to be. So I'm going to add a soak. You see this a lot in like bakery cakes because they're designed to last a long time and not dry out. Um, I'm just gonna use a little bit of milk. Then I have my cake stand. I'm gonna grab a piece of parchment. So I'm cutting strips of parchment. All right, I usually start by taking a dollop of frosting and I put it right in the center Then take your first layer. So I'm placing this on top and centering it on the cake stand and then press down gently. And that frosting is there to help it stick to the plate so it doesn't slide around. And I wanna apply this soak, in this case milk, to the cut side so that it can absorb into the crumb of the cake. I'm really just applying like a single application of milk and I'm not brushing, I'm dabbing. Because if I were to brush, I would kind of rake up some crumbs and then those crumbs would get into the frosting and then it's just not as neat. Once you've coated the entire cake in the frosting, it is hermetically sealed. Like nothing, that fat in the frosting creates a barrier. So no moisture is escaping. Now I'm gonna apply some frosting. So a cup is about the right amount for a cake this size. Actually it might be more than a cup in the recipe. See what it says. Might be a cup and a half. Oh, one cup of frosting. Okay, great. Because the frosting is still a little bit loose, I am not gonna go all the way to the edge of the cake layer. And that's just to avoid lots of oozing of the middle layer of frosting. All right, so the next layer is gonna go down and I'm gonna leave it cut side up and you can kind of get eye level with it. Again, these layers are super, super even. Now I just repeat the process. Okay, um, I'm ready for the last layer. I'm just trying to decide if I wanna put it cut side up or down. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna soak this layer before I apply it and then I'm actually gonna turn it upside down. We are almost done, but there is kind of an intermediate step called the crumb coat, something I've talked about in many places, in many different times. Basically, it's a thin layer of frosting that you apply before you apply the sort of final coat, and it just sticks all the crumbs that might come off the surface of the cake 
to the side so that you don't get those crumbs in the final application of frosting. So you have a really nice, clean cake. The whole, you see how the whole thing is sliding? There, get this thing in the fridge. Oh God, where am I gonna put this? Didn't I say last time I was gonna plan for space in the fridge? I did not do that. My bad. Right, so I'm gonna quickly finish this crumb coat because this has really got to chill. All right, I'll worry about the structural integrity later. I'm doweling it. This is not the best crumb coat, but it's the best I can do at the moment. I just have to take everything out now. All right, it's not leaning that bad. Uh, this frosting is still too loose, so I don't have room for the whole bowl. I'm just gonna put it in this pint container and stick it in the fridge. And hopefully this sets up along with the cake. Everything just needs time to chill. The cake, all things considered, is actually not in such bad shape. So I'm putting a lot of icing on top. In fact, I might put most, if not all of this. All right, so I'm much happier with this. The icing is much thicker and the cake is not moving around as I arrange the icing. Frosting. I say, I say icing and frosting interchangeably. They're not actually interchangeable. I think of icing as something that's like a thin, you know, powdered sugar mixture, almost akin to a glaze, and frosting is something, you know, fluffy and creamy like this. So really I'm frosting the cake, not icing it. So I scraped everything on top, and then I like to get the thickness of frosting that I want on the surface and then work everything else evenly down and over the sides, and then I kind of focus on the sides, and then I can go back to the top. Uh, this cake is looking, isn't it looking good? It looks great, I mean, I could, I could stop here, but I will show you a quick technique for creating an even smoother surface. So it does require some kind of straight edge, ideally a bench scraper like this, but basically I hold this straight edge against the cake at an angle, and then spin the cake, and basically the, the spatula takes off a thin layer of frosting. Now, if you do have this ridge of fluffed up frosting, here's what you do. You just gently scrape from the edge toward the center, like that. Wow, I'm kind of in love with how this cake looks. All right, I think I'm done. I think I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna do one more little area right here. Okay, I'm done. I'm, uh, Stop me. Tell me to stop. No, you're good. Okay, I'm gonna stop. And now the final touch is gonna be just some sprinkles. I always like to decorate whatever, whatever the thing is with whatever's inside. So now, the final, final step is to remove the parchment paper by just using my count spatula, I can't remember the name, to like hold the cake in place while I remove the parchment. I'm really into this cake. So the sprinkles, they obviously look great. I like the amount of sprinkles. To me, this is like everything I love about a box mix, but with a flavor that is much cleaner and like just better. Mm. I feel like, yes, this is a classic celebration cake, but I think it's a time when no one should need, like what occasions are there to celebrate? Not a whole lot. So might as well make this cake and have a reason to be happy about something. Thank you for watching. I love being back, being able to show you recipes from Dessert Person and like and subscribe. And what's the other one? That's it. Ring the bell. Ring the, is there, what do you mean?